So let's now build the actual memory, right? We're just going to build one bit for now. So what we need is a timer. Uh, and the timer is going to be a storing all of the data. The amount of data you want to store is, again, going to be tied to the amount of bytes you have in memory. Um, and that is also going to be tied to the amount of bits you have in the counter. Um, so we're going to do the maths on that later. For now, we're just going to set it to some length because we can. Um, and next, we need to place uh, down two gates. I'm going to rotate them so they are uh, visible. And we're going to connect these in a loop. So the timer to the top gate, to the bottom gate, and then back to the timer. So we have this loop, right? So we go from the timer to the upper gate, to the lower gate, and then back to the timer. And um, at some point, the data that we might want to edit comes out of the timer and goes through these gates, and then goes back into the timer. And we need to be able to uh, manipulate this data. So one way to do this is to have the upper one be an ALT gate and the lower one be an OR gate. What this does is that um, if the you, you say you would just give a, a continuous uh, turned on input through here. Cool. Like that. And you have your uh, button for the actual data input. So we could input some data like this, right? So let's just press the button three times. So if we wait a bit, then uh, these three pulses are going to come out again in the exact same way that we put it in. But say that you want to edit that, want to say, no, 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 no. I don't want three pulses. I want four pulses. So what we can do is we can turn off this and give our four pulses. Because it's turned off, this ant gate cannot possibly turn on. So instead of giving its output from the timer directly back into the OR gate and then back to the memory, it's actually going to block the output and instead only let through the button input. That's basically how it works. So by properly timing all of this, we can make sure that we only edit uh, that, that we only actually edit the, this data for a single tick. What we need to do to do that is that we need a bunch of extra gates. So we're going to be hooking this here up to some form of inverting gate. So it can be a NOR gate, and, but we're going to be using a NAND gate in this case. And we want this here to be an AND gate. We'll be having our uh, inputs be over here, so our data input. What to do is convert to in inverting gates will go into the upper AND gate, and the lower AND gate will be connected to the input, will be going over here. Actually, you should also hook up this button. Actually, we also need to hook it up here through a delay. I'm going to explain the delay later, what's that all for, but uh, for now, I'm just going to this, that, and a switch. So this switch here is our input data. As you can see, we can actually continuously give this input by, uh, for example, continuously having it hooked up to some register, right? Um, and, it, and it won't actually affect the memory. It will only affect the memory at the exact moment that this button is pressed. So if you only press it for a single tick, you can see that we've now written a single tick to memory. And it also came out as a single tick. Um, next to that other pulse that was already in there, which we didn't modify, because again, we only really modified it for a single tick. So what really happens here? Um, when we press this button, this gate will turn off, which means that this AND gate will be blocking the output from the timer on stopping the loop. It will only happen for one tick, because again, uh, we are hit it with a spot con, so this button is only triggered for one tick. 
So uh, after one tick, this gate we will turn on, and this on gate can permit all its data to go through again. Next, uh, we're actually going to use this gate as a quick delay. On uh, so one tick, so at the same time that this here is stopping its data from coming through, this here will be for one tick only showing the data that needs to be written. In this case, a one. So at the same moment, this OR gate would be usually getting its input from the timer. It would actually be getting its input from the uh, data input, but only for one tick and using some extra circuitry only on the exact moment that we want to write data. So um, again, we're going to be building eight modules of these. Um, we are actually going to be re temporarily removing this uh, uh, delay. Um, because we're building it into a centralized circuit. We don't need to copy that over for every single bit. Hello there, future version of CodeMaker 4 here. Um, so don't forget to actually set these slides to the correct length. Uh, what you need to do is you need to take the amount of uh, addresses that will be available in your computer. In my case, we're going to go for 8-bit addresses because we have an 8-bit counter. So that will be 2 to the power of 8 is equal to 256 addresses. Uh, you need to take that number, subtract three, and then make sure that the amount of ticks that your timer is set to is set to that number, right? So in this case, we did take 256, subtract three, which is equal to 253. So you set our timer to 253 ticks. If you, for example, have a 64 um, uh, address memory, uh, then you need to set it to 64 minus three is equal to 61 ticks. So go to 61 ticks. And if you want to do something, the maximum amount of uh, memory that you can have is with one timer is uh, limited by the timer. Um, so of course, if you set the time to the maximum length, it will be 2,400 ticks, but that, it's not a nice uh, power of two. So instead, the nicest power of two is actually two, uh, uh, 2,048. Ha ha. Where did that come from? That's a, that's a coincidence, I think. Well, it also has to do with the mathematics of the game, I guess. Um, so basically what we do is it 2, oh. well. 2 oh, four, eight. oh, of course, minus 3, right? So. 2048 minus 3 is equal to 2045. So if you, and this is also where the slowness comes in. As you can see, it takes over 50 seconds for the timer to actually go through all the values, which means that it can take up to 50 seconds to actually, or actually it's up to 51.125 plus a bit because of logic DNA seconds to actually read or write something. So yes, you can store over two kilobytes of memory or uh, exactly two kilobytes of memory with one timer, but it will be slow. Anyways, back to the uh, past version of CodeMaker 4. So I've copied this over eight times. Um, so now we want to actually also hook up our timer. So I'm going to quickly uh, remove some of the uh, unnecessary junk. And we're going to be running these together. And I'm, going, I'm just going to be using a caution block, maybe even two, because we're cautious. Uh -huh. 